In this video, I'm going to show you how to make someone look younger in Photoshop. This tutorial will be a whole lot more than the new Nero filter that allows you to de-age or age a person with a simple slider. I'm also going to show you how to use other filters and tools to enhance this effect. And as always, I would really appreciate it if you click on that like button if you see something that you enjoy or that you think will help you in your workflow. Doing so really helps out this channel with the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're new, make sure to click on that subscribe and notification buttons. Okay, let's jump right into the tutorial. The first step is to duplicate your layer. Press Ctrl J on Windows, Command J on the Mac to duplicate the layer and work non-destructively. Then go into Filter, Neural Filters. Then click on the Beta Filter icon and enable the Smart Portrait. From here, you can use the Facial Age slider. Drag to the left to make someone look younger or drag to the right to make someone look older. In this case, we want to make the person younger, so we'll click and drag it all the way to the left. Also, in some cases, you may want to uncheck Retain Unique Details. That will further enhance the, the aging effect. In this case, I don't think it looks too realistic, so I will leave it checked. But it just might work in your image. Something that you can do in the neural filters is stack filters. For example, we can stack the skin smoothing effect onto this, but I'm going to work on a duplicate layer to have more flexibility. So instead, I'm going to go into Output and select Duplicate Layer and press OK. And this is my result. I'm going to tap on the Z key to select the zoom tool and I'm going to zoom in so that you can see some of the imperfections that the filter creates. This is why I duplicated the layer so that I can have the original layer below and work with that and I don't destroy the original background layer if I need to merge. But the point is with layer 2 selected, which is the young face, you can see that there is this ghosting effect on his nose. So what I'm going to do is create a layer mask and select the brush tool and paint with black to hide those pixels. With a layer mask, you can paint with black to hide or you can paint with white to reveal. Notice that I revealed too much of the original image, so I'm going to paint with white to bring back the de-aging effect. Next, I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to screen and you can see the result. The next step is to make the person look younger by removing wrinkles and other blemishes that the filter didn't remove. To do so, select the layer thumbnail not the layer mask, make sure that the focus, the white outline is around the layer thumbnail. And you can use any of these retouching tools to adjust his face. For example, with the patch tool, you can zoom into blemishes like this one and remove them very easily. All you need to do is click and drag around the blemish and drag it into another area in Photoshop. will copy the texture and color of that area and blends it all automatically. It's a fantastic tool. I highly recommend it. To deselect, you can press Ctrl D on Windows, Command D on the Mac. At this point, go over your image and see if you can find other areas that you can adjust. What I'll do instead is select the Spot Healing Brush tool and I'm going to use it to remove other types of blemishes. For example, blemishes like the ones found here on his nose. One thing that you should note is that this tool works best if you have a soft brush. In other words, a low hardness. That way you have smooth edges. And you can also select a mode to better work with the pixels underneath. So in this case, we have a dark blemish. So I want to lighten that dark blemish. Make sure that sample all layers is selected so that we can paint on a new layer. And I'll just paint away these smaller blemishes. And you can also use it to paint away excess hair. And by the way, I think this is a good example to show you how this mode works. I'm going to make my brush larger and I'm going to paint on his eyebrows, like so. And notice that I really didn't damage the skin texture. Photoshop just covered the darker pixels. I'll undo that and I'll go back and change the mode into normal and I'll do exactly the same brush stroke. This time Photoshop destroys the skin texture by adding other darker pixels. So it's always a good idea to select either darken or lighten. You have to think about the blemish or distraction that you're trying to hide. If the distraction is brighter than the skin tone, select Darken. And if it's darker than the skin tone, select Lighten. For example, I can select Darken and go and remove these tiny little skin tags above his lips. And this is a fantastic tool to do that. Again, I'm not destroying the skin texture. I'm simply targeting the brighter pixels. Another thing that you may want to do is target some of the wrinkles that were left over. And again, the wrinkles are darker than the skin tone, so you want to lighten them. And you can just paint those away 
like so. And obviously take the time in your image to make all the small fine details. I'm not going to take the time to do that in this tutorial. I'm going to double click on the hand tool to fit the image to the screen and I can show you the before and the after. Much, much better. And I'm also noticing a huge imperfection here on his neck. And this is where the original face meets the altered version. So what I'm going to do is go back into the patch tool, enable this layer that contains the adjustments I made using with the patch tool earlier. And I can just select this area here like so and drag it over here, release and Photoshop removes those imperfections. Again, you can spend more time looking for imperfections like that. But in this tutorial, I think this is good enough. Next, I'm going to select the topmost layer and press Control Alt Shift E on Windows. That's Command Option Shift E on the Mac to copy all the pixels and paste them into a new layer. Then I'm going to go into Filter, Neural Filters, and under Feature Filters, I'm going to apply the Skin Smoothing Effect. In a lot of cases, the blur will be too intense, so I'm just going to reduce it down to zero. And it's still intense, but that's okay. I'm going to output the layer to the current layer and press OK. Photoshop will apply the blur to this layer. And you and I both know that portraits look unrealistic when you over blur them. So the way that I will fix that is by holding Alt on Windows, Option on the Mac, and clicking on the new layer mask icon to make a black layer mask, which will hide the contents of this layer. Then with the brush tool, I can paint with white to reveal the effect. In other words, I'm selectively bringing back the blur in areas that require it and not applying it to the entire image. Also, I'm working with a mouse. And if you had a Wacom tablet, you can enable the pressure sensitivity to build this effect onto your portrait. But in this case, I think we are okay with a mouse. Before and after. Next, I can select the topmost layer, hold shift and click on the first duplicate and convert that into a smart object. To make someone look younger, we also need to adjust the shape of their head. We need to make it thinner and maybe bring the chin up and the hairline down. To do so, we're going to go into the filter menu and select liquify. From here, you can enable the face tool and with the on-screen overlays, you can make his face thinner, bring his chin up and his hairline down. If you need to make any other types of adjustments, you can use the forward warp tool and that will allow you to push pixels in. For example, the pixels there that were not matching because of the filters that we applied. And also you can maybe increase the brush size by tapping on the right bracket key on the keyboard and maybe moving his nose up a bit so it doesn't come down too far. And you can make any other adjustments that you want to make him look younger. When you're done, press OK. And the final step is to go back into the filter menu and select the camera raw filter. And I'm just going to add a couple things. First of all, I'm going to go into the basic panel and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and maybe darken the shadows a little bit. Also, I'm going to scroll down, enable the detail tab and sharpen the image just a little bit. We added a lot of blur. So I really want to make sure that the remaining texture shows up also. I'm going to go down into the effects panel and add just a little bit of grain so that the image doesn't look so smooth and so digital. Then you can press OK. I'll collapse the layer and you can see the before and the after. And now that you know how to make someone look younger in Photoshop, go ahead and give it a try with your own photos. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you learned something, make sure that you click on that thumbs up button. If you decide to share your results on Instagram, make sure that you use the hashtag PTCVids. I would love to see what you came up with. Also, if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, make sure that you click on that subscribe and notification button so that you don't miss any future Photoshop tutorials. My name is Jesus Ramirez. Thank you so much for joining me on this Blurring Backgrounds Photoshop tutorial. I look forward to speaking to you again very soon.